we're settling on a season length of about three months. Yeah. And we feel like with the current season journey, you've got chapters one through four, and then the different more hardcore modes, not hardcore, hardcore the yeah. other kind of hardcore. Um, that people who play exhaustively have uh, enough time in three months to finish all of those. People who just have a little time and they want to finish chapters one through four and get their first big reward, such as the Frosttown Head in season four, that that amount of time seemed about right. And we've done everything from five months to seven weeks for season length over the seasons one through four. Yeah, and you guys are building in a, a bit of a downtime now as well. Like. We're going to experiment. We're going to try it, yeah. Yeah, and people, it's it's mixed feedback. Some people are like, I, I want the season to, next season to start immediately. I only play seasons. Get, Bring it to me. And other people are like, whoa, the seasons are coming really hot on top of each other. Can we have a break for a second here? Mm. And we thought, okay, well, let's try it. We'll try it. You know, it, will, it won't be very long. It'll be like two weeks, maybe, maybe even less, maybe, maybe a month at most. And even that, I feel like that's probably too high. Yeah. So we'll settle on that number over the next few weeks, and then we'll let people know. I'm glad that you guys are experimenting with that idea and kind of recognizing because I, I do think that there is a need for downtime in action RPGs. They're pretty intense games. and Exactly, especially if you're you pushing the leaderboards if you're competitive. Yeah, for um, sure. Or if you're trying to, even if you're not competitive, if you're trying to master the season, yeah. get all the way up. Um, yeah. That's pretty, yeah, exactly. It's hard. And with them becoming shorter now, there's potential that more people might play all the way through and having that bit of a break, even if it's kind of like, even if it feels like a little forced on you, I think it's... Uh, yeah, and I should hope so. And I noticed like that excited. there are a lot of Blizzard games now. And I have trouble keeping up myself, That's and I, I work for the company, so <laughs> you probably uh, know that Seasons are giving out stash tabs now, as That's well as we're giving news. out uh, a free stash tab to everybody, season or not. Just a couple stash tabs? For the first season, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and there'll be more in the future. So how uh, yeah, how it work, you'll, you'll get a stash tab for, for, for gold, and then uh, each uh, season, you if you make Conqueror, is what we're trying to do right now? Or for, we might, for season five, TBD. Conqueror, probably. TBD. Well, we'll, we'll go to PTR that way. Yeah. Um, feel free to give feedback. To me. Yeah, we'll figure it out. And um, uh, each stash, you can get one stash up per season up to a maximum of 10. Right. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. I was kind of joking around a bit because, uh, you know, people are going just, just one more stash tab, please. And you can up to 10 now. <laughs> so. Right, but not on day one. <laughs> yeah. No, it takes, it'll take time to earn them. But that's kind of like, it makes a good sense as each season you're collecting more and more things as new legendaries and new sets that you're mm -hmm. collecting them. Yeah, I mean, se Seasons as a replayability feature has gotten more and more important, so, you know, if you've got someone who's got a lot of Blizzard games to play and they come back once a season and do a certain amount and get their stash tab and get their cosmetic rewards uh, and then come back for the next season, we're seeing that pattern and we kind of like that, if that makes sense. Like you said, sometimes it's good to take a break, yeah. um, but the people who don't want to take a break, um, we're trying to make sure they have enough content as well, hence the 175 plus new bounties, the new type of bounties, the... Um, legendary gems with the augment recipe so you can augment your ancient items. So, hey, I've got all ancients. Oh, yeah? Well, now augment them all. All right, let's do it, right? So, um, something for all types of players that is appealing to beginner players and appealing to end game players has been a big push for this patch as well. Yeah, this uh, and this patch is pretty big overall. Like Biggest patch we've done yet. Yep. Yeah. Like, for example, 50 plus new legendaries, that's the most we released yeah. since Reaper of Souls yeah. itself came out. And that like did five times as many items as and D3 did. And huge yeah. for the amount of loot and changes that brought. So that's like, uh, it's it's pretty impressive for what is just another patch. Um, when, when we shipped 2-1, we were like, okay, we cannot do another patch this big. And so we did. 2-3, <laughs> we said we cannot do another patch this big. 2-4 is actually significantly bigger than both of those patches. That's, uh, that's what I'm wondering. Like, can you guys keep up this pace? Like, is this a comfortable pace of development of new things for you guys? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> or you like, it was crazy, like the set dungeon thing. The that sounded great months ago. And then once we were like on number 12 when there's still 12 yeah. to go, then it started to sound a little crazy. That came, that came in a little hot. What if we did one set <laughs> per class, just one dungeon for, for all six classes? And then we couldn't because the idea was really about, yeah, but the no, sets. every set has to have something specific to it. So. Yeah, uh, once we were in the middle of it, it seemed like you a terrible idea. You could have probably idea. started with one for each class. We would have we been right. pretty happy with exactly. that. Exactly, and then we could have added more later. No, <laughs> no. I mean, not good enough that. for and us. And then once we were in the middle of it, we could not take that back and yeah. do it the smarter way. <laughs> <laughs> we had to finish it, which we did in time for PTR. So all 24 of them are ready for feedback. Yeah. And I'm sure that that'll be one of the major tuning things for the for the patch. Awesome. Well, certainly having like two big patches like this back to back does create like an expectation of this is like a regular thing that's going to occur. So. No promises, you guys. Jeez, it was hard. <laughs> I hope that set dungeon story tells people. Yeah. <laughs> okay. yeah. Maybe they'll be a little more forgiving when exactly. the next patch rolls around and you guys are like, 
we really need to get some sleep. Like. <laughs> yeah, and we actually have more zones in this patch than we've had in all the other patches combined. Yeah, three. Uh, were they all each called zones or two? No, we have one zone, we have one zone and um, two, two areas, extensions. And we, areas. Also, there yeah. is a new dungeon under the zone, the Tidal Caves, um, okay. is underneath the Great Hall Island zone. Yeah, and like in the past, we had um, Sesheron, and it had um, a side dungeon too, didn't it? I think I believe so. I think so. I don't know. I got them mixed up. And now we have the we, Eternal Woods. Right, and we had the uh, the vault, um, the treasure vault before, with the treasure goblin queen lived. So we did a little bit. So each of our patches were delivering more areas. As Feature well. creep. <laughs> Which we should also probably stop. Doing. Yeah, we should probably stop doing. Like, producers. We did a lot of level <laughs> design and level art this patch. Yeah. Like when I looked at the milestone list, it was nuts. I'm actually it felt like we were back in Reaper development. I'm more blown away personally by um, the new monsters that come, have come with this as well. Like, 16 new monsters. Yeah. yeah, like that's there's a lot of develop like effort that has to go into creating a monster and the art for it and all of that sort of thing. There is. Most of those monsters have small but entirely dedicated teams just to each monster. That's how we started to do it. We have a tech artist and a character artist and a designer and a programmer and maybe a producer associated with each of those monsters. So yeah, a lot of work like that. Okay. The other uh, kind of cool thing I noticed that you guys were doing was a lot of new bounties this time around. And I think that's thanks to the fact that you kind of implemented this system that is maybe going to allow you to have a bit more randomization with bounties. Like uh, where the, you go into the bounty portals and there's kind of like oh, a yeah. challenge. Oh, yeah. Bounty grounds. Bounty grounds, right. So um, a bunch of stuff went into bounties this time. And part of the reason we have so many is we have so many new areas in the new zone. Yep. And each of those has bounties that are appropriate to it based on the events, the story events that are happening into it. Um, and that's one type, and then of course we have to populate them with your standard types of bounties, like yep. kill this named monster, such as Hedmonton the Sasquatchion, which is in Canada joke. Well, everybody. <laughs> yeah, no one else needs to. He's just a, a yellow yeti you need to kill. Um, and uh, bounty uh, uh, shrines and uh, cursed chests, cursed shrines, those sort of things. And then bounty grounds were an attempt to do that across the whole game with an entirely new type of thing. And so there are small enclosed areas that have specific types of challenges where the environment kind of matters. Like if you've got six different shrines you need to click and you have to finish them all before the first one respawns, like little things like that we were experimenting with. So this system is what I, when I said randomization, is I can see this system, this new type of bounty that's in a segmented off area, leading to a, an extra layer of randomization of bounties. As you said, you can put those anywhere, right. essentially. So Most increasing the bounties have been in really physical space, yeah. unlike Nephilim Rest, which is the exact opposite, where it's any dungeon combined with any group of monsters sort of thing. That was like the ultimate randomness. And these bounties are sort of in between, where there's some randomness compared to normal bounties, but not so much that they're stepping on the toes of Nephilim Rifts or Greater Rifts. It's almost like you guys are creating a, uh, a system where there's a bunch of different parts that you can start to socket together. Have you guys thought about the potential that this new system that you could add like, you know, challenge type A, challenge type B, challenge type C, and then have different ways of combining them together? Like, I um, think it kind yeah. of is that, and yeah. I mean, people see in PTR right away, like a week from now, right, everyone will be talking about exactly that thing. And if you think of something like the cursed, or not the cursed shrines, the set dungeons where there's very specific goals that are, are more about mechanics and a lot less about damage, that's going to be an interesting combination of activities in the end game now. I'm doing my rifts, I'm doing my bounties, I'm doing my Nephilim rifts, I'm doing my uh, uh, set, dungeons. set dungeons, and then because you're doing a lot of bounties these days, because Kanai's Cube, you need the mats for it, we did want to make those a lot more interesting, <coughs> and it wasn't just a matter of making bounties interesting overall, it was also the fact that some of the acts are more fun than some of the other acts, so we wanted to shore up where we put these new areas, zones yeah. and bounties. More of them are in the acts that got played the least in patch 2, 3, so some of it's data as well. Do you guys feel like the uh, the addition of adventure mode? Because I feel like adventure mode is like the future for action RPGs, rather than the more archaic method of running through the campaign multiple times. Certainly in the future for Diablo. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Do you guys feel like it's uh, just given you so much more freedom to do a lot of these sorts of things? Absolutely. The structure we had was just wrong, and we didn't. We were unable to see it or realize it until the game actually shipped. Um, and even so, it took us a long time to figure out. Well, how are we going to fix this? The game is what it is, and to figure out. That, that was the main secret. There, there's only two elements, if I had to pick two elements of, of Reaper of Souls and how it changed the game, it was giving us that structure that we've been building on ever since with like everything from Seasons. Most people play Seasons primarily in adventure mode, and I think Seasons, where you're playing the story over and over again, Seasons wouldn't be as fun either, so that kind of goes for everything. And of course, Loot 2.0, which we're also build on everything, and you know, 
Uh, I like the fact that we took the approach where we are not going to have like two classes of items. There's the old items that suck and then the new ones that are the hotness. Um, and as we're at, adding so many items patch after patch here, it was also important for us to make sure that all the old ones were good. So a lot of what, when we're making a new power, it's fairly easy for us to make like a weapon art. Like a sword doesn't take that long to make compared to a set of armor. So we could have just making brand new items for all these brand new powers, but we went back and we took all the original items that had no powers, that were just stat sticks, and we're giving, you know, more and more of them all the time, we're having these brand new powers so that original items were still good. Yeah, or would be good again, however you want to look at it. It allows you guys to do so much more as well. It was, it was really vital, I think, that we made, we tried to make everything we already have good, not just add new stuff with all we learned. The existing stuff is also still fun. Alrighty, well, I think that just about does this for time, guys. So thank you very thank much. Thank you very much. This I appreciate awesome. it. Thank you. Good chatting to you. Thanks. Good.